Hi, I'm Dave Warzel, and you're watching Spotlight on PHTV4. Today's Spotlight is on the football program at Stag High School in Palos Hills. With me today is head coach Colt Nero. Coach, thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, let's talk a little bit about first uh, your background. I want to talk about the highlights and you know some of the athletes on your team, and we can talk about your coaches. But what about your background first as a coach and teacher at Stag? Yeah, so this is my third year at Stag High School. Um, I coach, obviously, football, and I teach in the special services department. Um, before this, I was at McHenry High School, um, which is up north, and then before that, I played college football in Minnesota and then did some coaching in Minnesota. So, um, you know, I've been on a little bit of a journey that took me to Palos Hills. All right, I like, the, I like that your travels brought you here. Uh, congratulations, good luck. Uh, how about how the season's been going so far? I know there's only a couple weeks left, and I know you have a game coming up in a couple days, so we're deep in your season. Um, how about the highlights in general? How's it going? Yeah, it's going good. We um, started the season out really strong with 2-0. and um, You know, we've dropped the last few. We've had some pretty key injuries that have not helped us out, but, um, you know, we're looking forward to getting those guys back here pretty soon and, and – um, you know, putting putting something together here, make a push for the playoffs. Um, but, you know, the season's been great so far. You know, our guys are working really hard. Good, good. It's nice to hear that guys are working hard. And I, I know that's tough when you hit a, a rough patch and hopefully you bounce back in the next couple here. Can you talk about some of the athletes on the team that are helping make that season happen? Yeah, we've got a few guys. Uh, so the first guy would be Justin Obradovich. Uh, he's a three-year varsity starter for us. Um, he plays DB and receiver. He's a team captain. Uh, he was first team all um, conference last season. The other guy would be Labarian Gilmore. Um, you know, he's a junior this year, but he started at quarterback for us last year as a sophomore. Um, he was also first team all conference last year. Um, and Labarian right now has got a couple couple Division One offers, which is uh, you know bringing some good notoriety to our program. Um, and then the other guy would be Aiden Taylor, who's our other third year starter, uh, three year starter on varsity. He plays middle linebacker for us, and he's a team captain. So. Um, we got a guy, we had a bunch of guys that have been playing for a few years now, um, you know, that really kind of solidify what we're doing and, and, you know, keep the, keep the ship moving forward. Right, right. It's so important to have those type of hardworking guys to use yours and, you know, uh, especially in, in, in Justin's case, having guys with experience, uh, bring that level to it as well. What about your staff also? Um, because we, you know, making this thing happen, I mean, this is big football here, 8A, uh, big program, you know, how uh, how is the staff doing together, and, and who are some of the coaches, you know, calling your offense or defense? Yeah, so our staff is awesome. Um, we have, we've done a really good job since I've been here the last three years of we really haven't lost anybody, um, which is huge, and so a couple of the names that I would love to throw out there is um, our offensive coordinator, uh, his name is Tom Lally, he coaches, or he teaches PE here. Um, our defensive coordinator is Jacob O'Connor. He teaches PE here. And then our special teams coordinator is Eric Elgett, um, who teaches math here. And all those guys, um, uh, well, Tom and, and, and Jacob are both, uh, this is their first year coordinating on varsity. Um, so it's been a good experience for them. And, um, you know, they've, they've done a really good job so far. Good, good. And a lot of positives there. What about, uh, you know, looking at the season going forward, heading into the last two, and, and even in general, how the program is. Like, you've been here for three years now. So how do you feel like the program's progressing? Where do you see it headed over the, you know, uh, in the future coming up? Yeah, no, we've definitely been progressing. You know, it was really hard when we first started during the COVID season. Um, there wasn't much available. Um, and so we had around th just under just over 35 kids, I believe, um, you know, and, and this year we have over seven, we've just about 70 kids in the program or 70 kids on varsity, um, over 165 in the program. Um, so we've done a really good job of just getting kids, um, you know, interested in playing football, um, getting that buy in up and then getting kids excited to, um, you know, be a part of what we're doing right now. And um, it's been awesome to see, you know, and that's a huge kudos, not just to myself, but to all of our assistant coaches. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a pretty big piece because football, it definitely is a numbers game. you got to have guys coming out, and, and certainly it's a healthy sign if you have numbers increasing. So those kind of gains are important to your survival. You're in a very tough conference. You need to have you know, buy-in. And obviously, if the numbers are going up, it shows that kind of buy-in. Um, any other highlights for the year you want to talk about or how things are going? Yeah, no, we're just excited to, to get back on track this week. We got a big game at Sandberg for their homecoming. Um, we know it'll be a good crowd, a good environment, but um, our guys are good. You know, we're excited, and uh, you know, our focus is stacking some good practices this week and, and putting it together on Friday. Yeah, I know that's a big rivalry. I mean, district schools, but I think there's always been a you know a, an intense uh, competition between the two. What about uh, how, and then you know. 
for you as a head coach and actually any coach or teacher, there's always that you have to inspire, you have to motivate your athletes, motivate your staff and your coaches as well. Where do you draw your inspiration from to help you, you know, impart that on others or help motivate you to do the job you do? Yeah, no, I, I draw inspiration from my parents, from my fiance. Um, you know, all the, my, my circle that keeps me grounded does a really good job, you know, um, with the season being long and grueling at times, um, you need a really good support staff. Um, and then the other one would be our assistant coaches. All those guys do a great job of, you know, we take it very serious, but at times, you know, we, we, we all have really good relationships. We hang out outside of football. Um, and so being able to have those relationships with those guys, um, you know, my fiance, my family, um, you know, we, it's, it's nice to have that support and, and feel, um, you know, like I'm not doing this on my own all the time. I would say that is so critical. There's so many pieces that come into play, and there's so many challenges you're going to face through a year. Football is, is it's not a nine-game deal. It's a year-round gig, and they have family, uh, your fiancé. Congratulations on that. Good luck. When's the wedding day? Wedding is July 1st next year. All right, good luck. Um, and, and to have a staff that, like you said, you get along and you, and you work well together on and off you get together. That's great. All right, Coach, uh, good luck with the remainder of the season. Good luck in the future. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I'm Dave Wurzel, and you've been watching Spotlight. Spotlight has been on the football program at Stag High School in Palos Hills. Thank you for watching.